Um, our next speaker is um, Steve Murray from TB Alliance. So good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Carl. <clears throat> you know, it's been a really busy year at the TB Alliance, and so I'm going to go real fast through this, uh, but there'll be plenty of time for discussion, hopefully. So just to remind everyone, our, our overarching goal at TB Alliance is to develop um, a novel universal re regiment that's, that's um, composed of entirely no novel drugs. And so, you know, where we are right now with, that, with, with respect to that goal is that we do have the PAMZ regiment, which contains one novel agent. Um, its target treatment duration is four months and is currently in a phase three study to stand. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. The next step is uh, bedaquilin, pitominate, and pyrazinamide, which is two novel agents. The target uh, treatment duration is three months, and it's currently in a phase two study, NCO05. And then the third step on the way there is, is, is the, um, the JPA linazolid um, um, combination, which is three novel um, um, agents without any pre existing re resistance. The target duration is three months. And again, the idea is to, uh, to develop um, regimens that would be appropriate for treating drug sensitive as well as um, um, drug resistance disease. And so this is, uh, this agent, um, this regimen is currently being studied in the next TB study. And so we have made progress. We have, we have programs in all three um, categories of our regimen development. This is a very high level overview of where we are right now. So first of all, the STAN study, which is, um, which is the PAMZ regimen, is currently um, on hold because of safety concerns. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The NCO5 study, which is the, um, the um, um, BPAZ regimen, the, um, the two novel um, drug regimen, um, is just completed enrollment, um, and we're currently in the, the process of, of, of gathering the data and analyzing it. We expect to have um, um, data available in the summer in this coming summer. The next TB study, which is the, um, which is the um, BPA uh, um, Oxy um, regimen, um, is currently enrolling in patients and is active um, in South Africa. We have a couple of other programs. We have a linazolid dose ranging study, which is uh, really supporting the next TB regimen. That's currently, um, we finished the first phase of that, I'll show you some results, and we're moving on to an extension uh, of that study as well. And then finally, we had a phase one program, um, which was a backup compound to um, um, PA824. This was TBA354. That was um, in the middle of a multiple ascending dose study. We had some toxicity um, that really wasn't horribly unexpected, um, but we were hoping we wouldn't um, see it at the dose we did. So we saw some neurotoxicity with that program, and we decided to halt uh, development of that compound because we don't think we can achieve a, a, a dose that would be efficacious. So now, that's an overview. So, so I'll go through the studies quickly, one by one. So the, the STAN study, this is the phase three study of um, PAMZ. This study is currently on um, a clinical hold. It's a partial clinical hold. It only affects this study, not other studies with pertominib. Um, and that clinical hold was, um, was instituted by the DSMC based upon um, liver toxicity that was seen in the first 300 patients enrolled in the study. So, that recommendation from the DSMZ happened on September 22nd. We immediately halted enrollment in the study. As I said, we had about 300 patients enrolled at that point. When the DSMC reevaluated more data um, in November, they recommended that we restart enrollment in the study, but that we exclude HIV positive patients. We didn't really understand why that was and what was driving that in terms of the data, so we discussed with the FDA the possibility of letting a few of us look at unblinded data to, to make a determination of what we think the best way forward would be. So we've completed that at the TB Alliance. We've now submitted that data to the FDA, and we're currently um, waiting for the FDA to respond, and we expect to have discussions with the FDA about a path forward for this study relatively soon. So briefly, the NCO5 study, now this, is the, um, this is the JPAZ regimen. Um, this is a two-month I mean, two SSCC um, study. As I said, we've completed enrollment in that study. All the patients have, fin have finished treatment. We're currently evaluating the data, and we expect to have data um, 
in the, in the summer of this year. Just to remind you that this is a study that, that is really looking at the bacteriologic efficacy of this regimen, but we're also doing a number of other things such as we're looking at uh, simplifying the dosing of this regimen, of bedaclin on this regimen to 200 milligrams a day instead of the current loading dose followed by um, three times weekly dosing. And we're also doing a number of mycobacteriology experiments in the study. So it's actually a, a big study in terms of the science. Um, and as I said, we should have um, data this summer to evaluate. <coughs> You know, the next TB study. So this is this is the uh, this is the three novel drug regimen. Um, this this is a different paradigm for us. And so rather than going through you know classic phase two or phase three development, we decided that we would take this this regimen into really a phase three study first as a pilot study. And so this is looking at pertomin at 200 milligrams, bedaclin, um, standard um, dosing of bedaclin and linazolid. Uh, now, linazolid is in the study because it really is the only oxy that's available to us. We, we would like to consider other oxys as we move forward with this particular regimen. And the idea is that, that we're treating patients for six months. We can extend the, the treatment to three months if, in fact, they haven't culture converted um, by, by, by the fourth month. But the idea is to carefully evaluate patients um, to, to, to really assess the viability of this regimen to move forward into, um, to, into development. Uh, we're currently conducting it at two sites in, in South Africa, and um, and just to remind you of some of the you know, some of the challenges with this program, you know, linazolid or other oxys might not be safe enough for um, drug sensitive patients uh, because of their known toxicities, and so that's one of the reasons why we skipped ahead in development and, uh, and started with phase three. So this initial pilot phase three study is a little unusual for us in that. It is the first time we've looked at this regimen, but this is a definitive outcome study. And so, and so, and so in fact, we're following patients until they're cured. Um, th th there's obviously some trade-offs if you skip phase two, so there's a lot that we don't know about this that we're learning sort of on the fly. Um, but because of the toxicity, the potential toxicity of linazolid in drug-sensitive patients in particular, we felt that skipping phase two made sense. And also, if you remember, this is a study of XDR patients, and so they really have very little, if any, other treatment options. And so, and so another reason why skipping phase two into phase three makes sense. Uh, you know, we designed the study really based upon preclinical and clinical models of efficacy for these drugs. And so we didn't have phase two data, so, so really we're sort of moving forward based upon mouse data, what we know from the clinic for the individual drugs. And the idea is to, um, to um, study this particular regimen as well as explore safer and more effective ways to deliver linazolid, and so let me talk a little bit about that. And so, um, so linazolid um, is a challenge here because we have no idea how long you have to treat with linazolid. Um, the ability to treat for a long period with linazolid is driven by neurotoxicity um, and, um, and other uh, other toxicities associated with linazolid. We don't really know what the optimal dose of linazolid is. We all, you know, we have. Linazolid um, um, experience and other indications, but not really TB. And then also the schedule of, of linazolid dosing. I, I mean, really at the moment, all we have is what's been done and other indications. One of the interesting um, findings, and this is just a, a very you know, brief summary of this, is some mouse data that suggests that you know the dosing for linazolid might be something that we could adjust significantly. For example, this is a study where you treat mice for three months, and then you ask how many of them relapse after two months or three months. If you do that with the standard regimen, you know, 57% of the mice relapse after three months. If you do it with just um, bedaclin and pertomid, about 20% of the mice relapse. But if you add linazolid to that three months of treatment, none of them relapse. And so this is, this is the data, the part of the data that really uh, makes the idea that this is a, um, a, a short treatment, um, um, uh, short duration treatment. But interestingly, if you only add linazolid for the first two months, you still have a 0% relapse rate. And if you do the same thing for one month, uh, the same thing happens. And so it's possible that you can use this particular regimen with a much shorter dosing of, of, of linazolid, maybe even as short as one month. And so in this study, in the next TV, we're trying to maximize the dose of linazolid for as long as we can based upon toxicity. But we really feel like once we get over one or two months of treatment, we might be um, getting to a place where we have cure. So part of that effort to understand the how to dose linazolid is this dose ranging um, study that we did 
in conjunction. So this is a study looking at, uh, you know, obviously just multiple doses of linazolid, and we looked at both daily and twice daily dosing of linazolid. Um, the idea here was just to try, try to understand the bacteria, bactericidal activity of linazolid. And so this, this study has been completed, and this is the result. So these are, this is the, um, the, the liquid uh, TTP um, outcome from, um, uh, the, over the full two weeks of the study. And what you find is that um, there's a clear dose response, so the least eff efficacious, efficacious dose um, or the lowest bactericidal activity is, is the 300 milligram daily dose. As you go to the, to, to the right side of the slide, that's the HRZE control. You see an increase based upon daily doses uh, as you move up from 300 to 600 to 1200 milligrams a day. And there really isn't much difference between a daily dose and if you deliver the same total dose twice a day. And so what we learned from this is that, in fact, there is a dose response relationship as you increase from 300 to 1200 milligrams a day. Um, you know, the mouse relapse data suggests that, you know, you might be able to get away with linazolid dosing for only one or two months, not the entire treatment duration, which would greatly simplify the use of this regimen. And, um, you know, we're trying to use these results and other results that we gather as we, as we learn more about the oxys to inform NICS-TB. Once again, NICS-TB is a clinical study that's really a pilot study, and the idea is that we're being as flexible as we can in terms of dosing and managing patients so we can learn as much moving forward. And so, so far we've had 37 patients enrolled. We're doing interim analysis every time we have 15 patients who have six months of uh, post-treatment uh, data. The primary endpoint is the culture and clinical status six months after the end of treatment. Um, our first interim analysis um, was done, um, uh, will be done in the third quarter this year, but we, we continue to evaluate these patients every month the team that was working on the study meets to review the patients and their progress. It really is intended to be a, a sort of a pilot study as we go forward. We have had four deaths in the study. They died early on in treatment. Uh, none of those deaths seem to be related to drug treatment and were most likely due to underlying disease and other causes, but we're obviously paying a lot of attention to such things. And all the other patients are really doing well. The majority of the patients have culture converted early. Almost all of them have converted by, the eight, uh, by, by week eight. Um, they're all responding well clinically. This is really important. They're gaining weight. Um, we've had a number of patients, now 14 patients, have completed treatment, have been discharged to home. And so these are XDR patients. And so it's just really important to remember that, that um, we're following them very carefully. So far, they look like they're going very well, but we're continuing to learn and make adjustments as we go forward. The next step in this program really is going to be to um, is to, to figure out a path forward for development for this regimen. And so we'll be, we will begin conversations with the FDA, the EMA, and other regulatory bodies to understand how we can take this pilot data and move it forward into a full development program. So with that, I'll stop and um, see if there are any qu clarification questions. I know that was fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, I guess no clarification questions. So, Steve, thank you. Um